Hey guys, Pogu here, and welcome to the next episode of Java 101. In this episode, we are going to learn how to create and use arrays. Arrays are one of the uh, simplest but yet uh, most useful features of any uh, object-oriented programming language, uh, and Java is no exception. Um, arrays are incredibly helpful for keeping lots of data tightly compacted and easily accessible. Let's say that you worked on this game, made it a full AAA title, and you wanted to add multiplayer support. So you could have multiple instances of this player class where each one represented a player. You could have a hundred different players, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, but that would be incredibly tedious to, say, update the health for all of them at once, or you know, check each one to see the next open player slot. Uh, you could do that, or you could have one array that stores all of the players. Um, and today we're going to learn how to do that by making a sample array to handle the talking to the townspeople. Uh, you probably don't know it, but you've actually already written uh, part of the array syntax. The main method takes a string array of arguments. <clears throat> These are the command line arguments. So if you run this from terminal or command prompt and you specify arguments when you run it, they are put into this string array of arguments and you can access them. So we're going to actually write our own string array today and I'm going to explain some of the different um, you know, features of arrays and how to write them. So what we're going to do is we're going to write an array of messages that the townspeople would say. And then we'll go through each um, for every message in the array and we will print it out. So in order to write an array, you first write, in this case we're going to do an array of strings because these are messages. If you wanted to store multiple players, you could do an array of players. You do class name and then the, um, what are these, square brackets, and then we can call this msgs, or messages, equals, now you're going to say new string array. Now, you can't simply uh, instantiate a string array like this. There are two ways to instantiate an array. The first is by specifying the size, and the second is by specifying the starting content. Let's say that I wanted to declare an empty array, but it had five different slots in it. I could make the new string array and put five in there. This um, messages is now of size five. There can be, uh, there are at all times five strings inside of the array. Uh, if you don't specify one yourself, the string I believe would be null. But there are always going to be there uh, five. You can't easily add a sixth or sorry or go down to four. Um, we'll get into how to do that using an array list eventually. But for now, we're going to do uh, this. Now that's one way to do it. But the easier way to do it is by using the curly braces. You can actually specify the starting contents of the array, and this is where we can actually write all of the messages. So, um, so we can actually just write all the messages, like, um, hey there, how are you today? Nice weather we've been having. And this game is amazing. Oops, I just broke fourth wall. Alright, we can clean this up a little bit by adding some spacing. I usually like to keep it like this. Each string gets its own line, and then we put the curly braces on their own lines. It's just, basically, we're just spacing it out so it's easier to see. So as you can see, we have a string array of messages, which is basically one object that contains multiple uh, strings, or the type of the array, and we're giving it the initial contents of, hey there, how are you today, and that's where they're, and all of these four messages. So now right here, um, we're going to use a for loop to go over all of the um, 
messages and print them out. Now you may be wondering how to actually access um, these objects because when you look at MSGs or any string array, the only thing that you'll see that's different is this clone method, um, which is not very, it's not important right now, and then this length, which is an integer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to access the data. Now this length is actually incredibly important. This returns the length of the uh, array. In this case it would be 4 since there are 4 messages. So we're going to say 4 int i equals 0, i is less than messages dot length. Now I could hard code in 4, but in this case I just don't want to. It's not good practice and say I added a fifth message, it, I would also have to know to change that and it's just annoying. So now we're going to start at 0 um, and go through, this will go through each um, number, so in this case it would go from 0 to 3, which would take care of all four. We're going to say print, and then we want to print MSGs, and we're going to do this at position I. What I'm doing right here is by saying MSGs and then putting um, the I in square brackets is I'm saying that I want to get um, the string at position i. So the first time it runs, i will be 0, and the string at position 0 is hey there, so it'll print that out. Then i will be 1, and it'll be how are you. Um, now, if if this were to go over the message's length, you'd get an array index out of bounds exception. Basically, um, this this is, if you tried to go to 5, um, then there aren't as there are too few objects for you to go that high, so it just wouldn't work. But this loop will work, and if we actually run it, then we'll say my name is Pogo, and we want to talk to the townspeople. As you can see, it says, "Hey there, how are you today? Nice weather we're having. Makes the game is amazing." So as you can see. Yes, we could have printed out each of the four messages individually, but this is just an easier way of doing it. And um, arrays, and especially array lists, are crucial to programming. You will use them a lot in the future. When you get into some of the bigger applications, um, you really can't... Big applications, you in some cases, you just can't uh, make them without arrays. So... That's all for this video. It's just an introduction to arrays. There's a few uh, other little things that I want to show you. I will show you array lists, and I will also probably in the next video show you the enhanced for loop, which is pretty nice. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, please click the like button, and I will see you guys soon with the next episode of Java 101. Thanks, guys.